Hello, welcome to Devly, a multi-service development environment. I'm Eric Hodel. I work at Fastly, an engineer in the engineering experience department on our development environment, and I'll be describing Devly to you today. I've written lots of Ruby code, some of which you use every day. Hello. All right, there we are. Uh, my name is Ezekiel Templin. Uh, I'm at EZKL on most places on the internet. I've been writing software of one kind or another for more than 20 years. Um, we currently work within Fastly's engineer experience organization, focusing on improving Fastly internal engineering tools and processes. Um, Fastly is a content delivery network and edge cloud provider. Fastly serves traffic for GitHub, New Relic, Spotify, and many other popular websites and services. Uh, Fastly also provides service for all Ruby and Ruby Gems downloads and does the same for many other open source projects free of charge. Um, ask us after the talk at our booth uh, if you're interested in using Fastly for your open source project. Um, we have servers all over the world uh, which serve more than 14 trillion with a T internet requests each month. This constitutes more than 10% of all internet traffic. Um, today, we'd like to discuss a problem that we believe impacts organizations of all sizes. Uh, and to help us illustrate this problem, I'd like to tell you a story about the evolution of Fastly's API. This is a rough approximation of the service architecture that backed the Fastly API circa 2012. The original Fastly development environment consisted of a copy of each component of the Fast, of Fastly API running on each engineer's laptop. Soon after, the early team decided that virtual machines should be employed to provide a degree of operational uniformity and parity between development and production. Another attribute of Fastly in the early days was that all of the engineering work was being done by a very small group of people. Changes to systems were easily introduced and distributed through source control which allow the teams to rapidly develop and deploy changes. Another side effect of the small size of the company was that focused discussions were possible. This made easy decisions easy to communicate. Let's zoom back in and step forward in time a few years. Fortunately for us, the company was successful. That success opened doors for new opportunities to expand the business by adding additional functionality to our API. In some cases, when we added new functionality, we added new supporting systems. When we, as software engineers, add new functionality and dependencies to our systems, we introduce complexity. And I don't mean to imply that complexity is necessarily a bad thing. To the contrary, we would argue that complexity is an unavoidable side effect of growth. There is something else that I haven't mentioned yet that complicates matters even more. We like to use the right tool for the job, and so many of our services were written in entirely different languages within very different workflows. Despite the increase in the number of languages and services, our development environment stayed much the same. Moreover, the gaps between each group's development workflows grew considerably as well. This became increasingly problematic as our engineering department doubled in size every six months. As a result, our original development environment became increasingly unreliable and the established processes to communicate changes broke down. Maintaining any single engineer's environment became more and more time consuming and led to unnecessary conflict. We have engineers working on everything from code that runs in the Linux kernel to code that runs in the browser. The needs of each team in these different areas are di dramatically different and our original development environment was unable to meet the needs of one team without compromising the needs of another. This growth continued regardless of our development woes. Writing and scaling software is complicated, and there are many moving pieces and things to keep in mind. However, as an industry, we've established and continue to improve upon strategies that can help us direct our time and energy. I believe this is due in large part to our ability to observe software systems in isolation. Organizations, on the other hand, are far more complex and much harder to observe in systematic ways. But by introspecting on our own experiences and listening to our coworkers, we were able to find themes and common frustrations. And these are some examples of, of, uh, of summarized of, of conversations that were happening for, for employees at the company. You know, here's your laptop. We'll see you in two weeks when your development environment is running. Does anyone know why the API gateway crashes in a loop? I updated the rest of my development environment and now nothing works. I can't do my work today because I need to rebuild my development environment. Uh, does anyone in the room have experienced something like this before? Yeah, quite a few of you, yeah. Uh, so this is it's not an uncommon problem. Um, 
Um, but it was obviously it's, it's unsustainable. And so it was you know, becoming untenable and only uh, more problematic over time. And, and moreover, our friends and coworkers were becoming increasingly frustrated, which meant that the company wasn't being productive. But what to do? During the same period of time, many new tools like Docker Compose and Minikube were released, but none that met all of our developer needs. Um, so through observation, research, and a lot of discussion with our friends, coworkers, and peers in other companies, we arrived at a few important themes for a good development environment. Um, and we believe these themes embody the traits uh, of desirable developer-focused productivity tools. The development environment must be reliable. I should be able to run a small number of commands to get what I need running. I should not have to know how every system works to do my job. Uh, and I should be able to easily see the local health of systems I rely upon. I should never have to spend a day rebuilding my development environment. The development environment must be accessible. Maintainers of systems must be allowed and encouraged to maintain their development environments collectively. I should be able to build and test new changes across systems owned by different teams easily. A development environment that spans multiple teams and workflows must be maintainable by the community of folks using it. Managing changes in source control illuminate past and present ownership, even with many components. Structure and form should be encouraged through convention, documentation, good tooling, and feedback loops, rather than enforced by gatekeepers. We want our development environment to be able to run discrete services together in composable units. It should also be easy to try out new supporting systems. And lastly, a development environment must be reproducible. We need the ability to determine and apply the last known good state of all systems. Source control and similar mechanisms should allow us to determine how we arrived at this known good state. And we should be able to leverage existing tools like Git, RubyGems, Perl's CPAN, Python's PIP, and Golang's DEP. So throughout the rest of this talk, we hope to show you how we've started to meet the needs of our coworkers at Fastly by applying these themes to a tool that we've been building together for the last year. Uh, we call the tool Devly. To tell you more about Devly, I'd like to hand things off to my friend, close collaborator, and lead engineer on the Devly project, Eric Hodel. Thank you, Zeke. I will talk about Devly and some of its components and features. As Zeke covered, Devly is designed for developers. Devly builds images from your repositories. It uses those images to manage containers and enables communication both within and across teams of developers. Devly is distributed for Mac OS and Linux. We provide a standalone executable built by Ruby Packer and provide packages for Mac OS and for Debian. Devly lets you configure all of your services. It helps you build images from your repositories using Docker files. It allows you to configure those images to run as services and to run groups of services together as part of a rack. An image contains the files necessary to run a service. The audit log image uses Ruby, so it has a copy of our application code. That code requires some libraries like Rails, Sidekick, and a JSON parser, so the image contains those installed gems. The JSON parser requires a C library, so we install that with the OS package system. In our repository, there is a Docker file that contains the instructions for building this image. Images contain, can contain applications for any language. Our stat service is written in Go. Its image has a Go binary compiled from the stats application code. The web app our customers use is written in Ember. This image contains a copy of the application code ready to run. We share all these images across teams by uploading and downloading them from Google Container Registry. This allows us to be sure we're always using the images built from the latest source code. A Devly service is a runtime configuration for an image. Here we've created the audit log service using the audit log image. A service runs a command. Since the audit log service provides an API for managing event data, it runs a Rails server to provide the HTTP interface for events. Our audit log needs to be accessible to other services so they can read and write events. To allow other services to communicate us with us, we expose port 8888. If you use a framework like Rails that supports live development, you can mount your repository on top of the files in the image. This allows you to work in your favorite editor from your favorite OS. You can change a file on your host OS and see the changes in your browser. This service runs the audit log API, but we also have some sidekick background jobs to run. To make it easier to read our logs, let's use a separate service to run these background jobs. Since the background jobs 
all use all the same models and databases as our application, we can use the same image. Then we create the audit workers service, but we run the sidekick command instead of the rail server command in the audit workers service. Then when we start up the audit log ser API service, it only runs rail server. And when we start the audit worker service, it only runs the background jobs. This separation helps make development a little more accessible because the logs are separate. We can also test our audit workers in complete isolation from the API. We'll create a few more services for our applications, including the authentication API, the configuration API, and some databases they use. If we're going to work on the configuration API, we don't want to start up services we don't need, the same when we work on the authentication API. We can create a rack for developing the configuration API that contains only the services it needs. We need a MySQL database, the audit log, and the config API services. The rack can customize a service. Since we want to access the services running in the rack for development, we expose ports for a few services to the host OS. This allows us to connect to these ports from the browser. You can also set environment variables or mount different files to change the behavior of the service. Devly allows you to configure multiple racks. The authentication, teams need, the authentication team needs to work on its services, which include the Postgres database and the authentication API. The authentication development rack also uses the audit log service, just like the configuration team. When we start these racks, we use independent containers to run their services. This allows the teams to have different configurations and software versions for the audit log service that won't collide with each other. For example, you can start up both racks at the same time to isolate bugs that span multiple services. Using common configuration to replicate services across teams makes sharing your work easier. The configuration for the images, the services, and the racks are shared in the Devly library repository. At Fastly, we allow any developer to make changes to the Devly library and have them discuss proposed changes with the people that develop with that service. The authentication, configuration, and audit API teams all have racks using the audit log service. When the audit dev team proposes changes to the audit log service, all of the teams need to be able to discuss them. By tracking the connections between teams and services through the Devly library repository, they become more visible, which improves the maintainability of your services and the communication across your teams. Now that we've had an overview of the components of Devly and how they can combine, I'll show demos of common development tasks using Devly from the perspective of developers on the various teams we've seen. We'll run through some workflows like getting started with development, sharing changes within and across teams, and set up some convenience tools that will make development easier for ourselves and our coworkers. Let's start at the beginning by setting up Devly as a first time user. We run Devly setup and give Devly a Git repository to pull a Devly library from. This downloads the Devly library repository and other repositories for our services. Along with checking out repositories, Setup performs some additional tasks, including checking your Docker version and your Google Cloud SDK version. The Setup command will try to fix things that it can, or it will give you a message to help you fix it if it cannot do that for you. This step takes no more than a few minutes to fetch the necessary repositories and perform the necessary checks. Once setup completes, we can run Devly info to see what racks and services are available to us. Devly will give us the list of the racks and services in our Devly library. We can retrieve information for a rack, which includes the services it starts. And we can retrieve information for a service, which includes the image, the repository, and metadata for ensuring the image is compatible with the files in the repository and up to date with the registry. Now that we have completed setting up Devly, let's start a rack and perform some basic development tasks like viewing logs, using our service, and making a small change. The Devly up command starts a rack. Since we don't have all the necessary images downloaded from the registry, first we see Devly pulling one of the images. Once all the images are downloaded to Docker on our host OS, Devly creates a network to isolate this rack and starts all the containers. When containers aren't dependent upon each other, Devly can start them in, in parallel to speed up startup. Now let's check to see if everything is running OK. We run Devly status to see which racks and services are currently running. We can see the two API services and the database are running. 
and we can see the two API services are accessible to the host OS on ports 8888 and 9999. We can view the logs for this rack by running devly logs. This command will continue to follow any new logs until we exit with control C. Since everything seems to have started for real, let's try out the configuration service by switching to the browser. The, quich, the configuration service was running on port 8888, so when we load it, we see the main page for the configuration API. Now we're triple sure the rack is working. Let's switch back to the terminal to view the logs for this request. Devly logs shows our HTTP requests from viewing the config API main page. Everything is definitely working, so let's do some work by opening up the main page in our favorite editor, Vim. We open the source for the main page from the host OS and add some text. This is an example service. Because no one has figured out how to exit Vim, we only save the file. Let's switch back to our browser and see if our change worked. Reloading the configuration API shows the text, this is an example service has appeared. Our change was successful. Let's check the logs to see if it wasn't fake. And of course, the request from the refreshed, log, uh, refreshed page appears in the logs. Since it has a 200 response with a different page size, we definitely loaded new content. Now that we're done with our work, let's shut down the rack by running devly down. This stops all devly containers we had running. This might save me a little bit of CPU power, but normally our services at Fastly are lightweight, even when starting a rack with a dozen services. When we work within our team, we'll be pushing and pulling changes to our team's repositories. When we work across teams with Devly, the other teams will push images for their services when they have a new set of features ready. For this workflow, the audit team has updated the audit log image to add a source field for events, and we need our services to use this new feature. First, let's see if we already have the source field by loading the audit log service in the browser. I see the user ID, the timestamp, and the action fields, but no source field. So we're using the old audit log image. Let's switch to the terminal to update our service. Since we verified we don't have the source field, we'll pull the latest image. And sorry about the lack of output, it's a bug. Our running audit log service is still using the old image, so we'll need to shut it down and start a new image. We can do this with Devly Restart, which will replace our audit log service with a new one running the updated image. Let's switch back to our browser to see the updates. We refresh the audit log service in the browser, and we see the source field has appeared, just where we expect it. Now that our audit log service is running the latest image, we can continue updating our service to use the source field in the audit log. So far, we've only worked outside the container. Sometimes we need to run commands from inside the container where all our dependencies are loaded. Let's pretend we're on the audit log team now and go back in time a bit. We're now working on adding the source column to our database. To do this, we need to run a migration we've just written. We can't do this from the host OS because none of our application's gems are available. They're only inside the container. So we need to run the migration from inside the audit log service. Let's start the browser again. We view the audit log homepage, and of course, we don't have the source field because we haven't run the migration. Devly exec lets us run commands from inside the container. We don't remember exactly what the image layout is, so we start a bash shell so we can explore. After the shell is open, we remember to change to the audit log source directory, then check to make sure we're in the right place by running great capital T, then run the migrations. We can see that the migration said it added the source column. Let's go back to the browser and check it. Reloading the page in the browser shows the source column migration is complete. Now that we've remembered where the rake tasks live, let's run the command directly so we can use our shell history in case we need to roll back and retry the migration. So we switch back to our terminal and run our migrations using devly exec with a complete rake command line. This is a little better, but it's only really okay for this one task this one time. When we share our work, how will other teams remember how to run our migrations? What we've done is not very usable, and it would be nicer if migrations were, run, were easier for everyone to run. To make running migrations easier, we can save long devly exec commands, uh, or the long devly exec migration command as an easy to remember command. We don't want to remember uh, or look up or type this long command to run migrations. 
Let's give this command a friendly name that's easier to type and remember. The saved commands live in the devil YAML file for the repository we are working from. Here, is a, here we're in the audit log repository. Each repository can have its own devil YAML with its own custom commands. Let's zoom in to look closer. The run commands are a collection of friendly command names for us to run. I chose audit migrate as the name of the command which will run the migrations. The command runs on the audit log service, and the command line is the one we've seen earlier, which runs the database migration task. We can also define a test command to run the tests from inside the service. This way, anyone can run tests where all the dependencies are up to date. So now we can run audit migrate from the audit log directory. Or we can run the tests. Since these tests are running inside a container, which is running as part of a rack, they may communicate with other services in the rack. You can have separate racks where one is configured to run unit tests that don't talk to other services, and a larger rack with more services that runs the integration tests. Either test suite could be started from a saved command and can be reused in a continuous integration environment. Sometimes we have to work together with another team, and it definitely has a workflow for cross-team development. The audit log team is working on some new high security features. Their work isn't complete yet, but they want our feedback before they continue and make something that's too difficult to use. To give them feedback, we need to work with their, their work in progress branch. We were told that if we went to the audit log page, we would be running the correct code if a high security logo appeared. We go to the audit log page, and we see the same one as usual. No high security logo anywhere, so we'll need to switch to their branch. The high security branch may have new dependencies that our image doesn't have. We can't mount a copy of the updated branch on top of our image, because without the updated gems, the code won't work. We'll need to build a new image to be sure everything will work. To build a new image from the high security branch, first we need to tell Devly to use a repository we control. We use Devly link to tell Devly about our copy of the repository. This will let us build the image from the correct branch. We see that the audit log repository inside our Devly library reports, points to our copy now. Next, we change to our repository copy directory, and we check out the high security branch. Then we use Devly build to create a new image for the audit log service. Now that our new image is built, we can restart the audit log service. We use devly restart again, like we did when we pulled the audit log image that had the source field. Now when we reload the browser, we can see we're using the high security branch because the high security logo is present. Now we can do some test integration with the new code to give feedback to the audit log team on the high security features. As adoption increases, we'll want to centralize image building through continuous integration, so you always have up-to-date images in the registry. By running your tests through Devly, you have a more consistent environment because the image, the service, and the rack are all built and configured the same way in both the continuous integration and local development environments. Regular Devly setup may take too long in a CI environment as it performs more checks and retrieves all the Devly library history. The CI mode for Devly setup reduces the history and repositories fetched to save time. The CI environment has a repository checked out to the correct commit already, so we can use devly link to use the correct source files. The overwrite, file, or overwrite flag makes sure we replace the ex any existing files. The new code we're testing may have new dependencies, so we need to build a new image, just like we did with the high security branch. Finally, we start the correct rack for testing this service, then everything, everything will be ready to run tests, same as our local environment. The next thing to do is run our tests. We use the same saved command we saw earlier, and if the tests are successful, then we're, and we're on the master branch, we can then push our new config API image to the registry to share this new image with all the teams. Adopting Devly has given us a common way to start more and more of our services. Once you have a sufficient set of teams using Devly, you can build on top of this capability beyond the workflows I've demonstrated. All the workflow demos I showed were for Ruby applications, but they are no different for developing a Go application, which runs a compiled binary inside an image. With the Go app, you edit the source code, 
create a new image with devly build, then test it with the saved test command. This makes the development process more accessible as you don't need to learn as many new things when working on different languages. Using the same commands I demonstrated earlier, you can use devly in your config continuous integration environment. Also, by creating larger racks with more services for testing, it is easier to run integration tests or end-to-end -to -end tests across more of your services. By ensuring that your images, services, and racks are reliable at every level, you can more easily move your containers toward deployment. The image as the base of all your services makes the contents of any application accessible to various security scanners. This allows you to run internal compliance processes, run vulnerability scans of libraries in your images, or find issues with static analysis. You can perform enhanced testing, such as a rack for fuzzing, to provide bizarre inputs to try and break a service. You can get started with chaos engineering in an isolated, stable environment. You can build separate staging environments for groups of services or to run integration tests. And now Zeke will share a few things we've learned while building and collaborating on Devly with our coworkers. Finding early adopters is key. We were fortunate enough to have a diverse group of early adopters with varying degrees of experience who were willing to provide us with constructive criticism very early on. We had a few early adopters with previous container experience who were able to provide us with feedback on our containerization and orchestration strategies. And we also had a few early adopters who were relatively new to Fastly and who had little or no previous container experience. All of our early adopters helped to make Devly a better product early on. And since one of our major goals was accessibility, their perspective was key. On top of the, their feedback, our early adopters' advocacy helped increase internal adoption from 5% of our product engineering groups to over 50% in a little over six months. With that kind of adoption rate, we learned the importance of building and sustaining an open, supportive community very early on in the process. Talking openly about our plans, successes, and especially failures, as of to, uh, uh, talking openly, yeah. As of today, our Devly Library repository has 10 contributors and includes people from almost every team in Fastly Engineering. All of this fosters a sense of shared ownership and togetherness. And once your community is in place, build processes to ensure that you're taking feedback into consideration and communicating effectively. The more heard people feel, the more likely they will be to talk, ask questions, and provide feedback. We acknowledge, discuss, and ticket bugs our users find quickly. When we fix them, we let the people that reported them know. You want stability as one of your goals. This is an example of someone who I think probably a lot of people in this room know, um, who we have the good pleasure of working with. Um, this uh, is a, a, the problem that we commonly faced was that we didn't know if the tests that we were running were failing because of the development environment or the, the code itself. Um, so another key here is, uh, uh, is to document everything. Uh, good getting started documentation can reduce friction and uh, needs to be maintained. And documenting the workflows you use as well as the ones you observe uh, and make sure that your users know that they are free to update documentation if they want to. Uh, document administrative tasks and release processes. You'll be glad you did. Because it turns out that, that QA automation for a cross-platform CLI is really hard. Um, despite the Devly CLI having 97% test coverage, we find bugs in weird state-specific edge cases all the time. Uh, that said, automating our release processes have proven to be a real time saver. We've also started extending both the tool and its test harnesses to check for and report common issues around rack schemas. So we regret to say that Devly is not yet open source. Um, supporting our users at Fastly and preparing for this conference did not allow us the time to prepare Devly for an open source release, but we are very close. Um, and we will have something soon, so follow us on Twitter um, and talk to us if you'd like to have us reach out to you um, for more information soon. Um, here's some credits for various logos and things. Uh, thank you.